Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the Hockey Journey Podcast, episode number 122, Russo's Golden Rules for Hockey Defensemen and Forwards, presented to you by OnlineHockeyTraining.com. I'm your host, Coach Lance Pitlick. If you're new here, please make sure you subscribe so you won't miss out on any future episodes. Before we transition into learning about Minnesota hockey icon John Russo, his golden rules for hockey defensemen and forwards, and begin this conversation, if you want to learn more about me, my hockey experiences, that I have the world's largest database of off-ice stick handling, passing, and hockey shooting drills, what I know, and most importantly, how I've been helping hockey players get really good with a stick and puck, just head on over to OnlineHockeyTraining.com, that's OnlineHockeyTraining.com, and gain instant access to my 10-part video series where I'll show you everything. Consider it my gift to you. Lastly, if you live in Minnesota or are visiting the state of hockey sometime soon and want to schedule an in-person off-ice stick skills lesson, I'd love to have the opportunity to show you my little world. Go to SweetHockeyCoach.com that's SweetHockeyCoach.com and watch the video on the homepage for instructions. Thanks, and I look forward to working with you sometime soon. If you've never heard the name John Russo, you probably aren't from Minnesota and hockey isn't your thing. The state of hockey owes a lot to this individual as he changed the direction of boys high school hockey's long-term development model. Though we lost this Minnesota icon the spring of 2023, his contributions to the growth of the game of hockey will never be forgotten. We'll gain some insight into his hockey life shortly. Lastly, he also left behind a couple of timeless articles, Russo's Golden Rules for Defensemen and Forwards. Let's learn a little more about the hockey life and contributions of John Russo. I'll be reading a post from the Upper Midwest High School Elite Hockey League website. New Hope, Minnesota, April 20th, 2023. The Upper Midwest High School Elite Hockey League, regarded as one of the premier development leagues for high school hockey players and a model program for player development in North America, announced the passing of its founder, John Russo. Concerned about the increasing exodus of high school players to various AAA and junior hockey circuits in North America, a small group of player development experts formed the Elite League in 2001 to provide the region's top players with an opportunity to play with and against top competition while maintaining their eligibility to play high school hockey in their respective communities. Russo, with the initial input from legendary collegiate and Olympic coach Herb Brooks and longtime Minnesota hockey player development icon Ted Brill, formed the Elite League under the guise of the Project Prep Player Development Plan. Russo tirelessly lobbied the state's amateur governing body of ice hockey, Minnesota hockey, and the Minnesota High School League to sanction a competitive alternative for the state's top players to reduce the risk of players leaving high school and to increase their developmental trajectory to the NCAA and professional ice hockey. While many individuals contributed to the Elite League's success, Russo was regarded as the league's heart and soul, immersing himself for 12 years in virtually every facet of league administration, game day operations, player recruitment, and public relations. Under Russo's firm and steady leadership, the league became one of North America's top player recruiting venues for NCAA D1 programs and offered a unique early look to professional scouts preparing for the NHL entry draft. It wasn't uncommon for the Elite League to draw 100 coaches and scouts to games, and thousands of players benefited from its existence. Hundreds of Elite League alumni have moved on to college and professional hockey, including the likes of current NHL stars Ryan McDonough, Jordan Schrader, Anders Lee, Jake Genzel, Nick Letty, Brock Nelson, Nick Bukestead, Brock Besser, Casey Middlestadt, Justin Hall, Nate Schmidt, Neil Piant, and many more. 
Bringing life to this league was not an easy task. In the tradition-rich and risk-averse state of hockey, said Jack Barzi, a former scout with NHL Central Scouting and a resident of Burnsville. John Russo's unique blend of business intellect, political savvy, developmental focus, and willingness to stand his ground made it work. I believe John had one thing in mind, doing what was best for high school hockey players. An icon in the Minnesota hockey community, Russo also coached at the high school and youth hockey levels for over 20 years and penned a regular column for Let's Play Hockey, a regional hockey newspaper. A native of Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan, Russo played collegiately at the University of Wisconsin and is a member of the University of Wisconsin Hockey Hall of Fame along with his 1963-64 teammates. Again, I pulled that from the Upper Midwest High School Elite Hockey League website. As I mentioned earlier, Mr. Russo also left a couple timeless articles that I'd like to share with you next. Maybe it's something you listen to as you're driving to your next practice or in the locker room prior to hitting the ice for your next game. Since I was a defenseman, we're going to start here first, but know that I recognize all you defense women out there as well. Here are Russo's Golden Rules for Defensemen. Golden Rules for Defensemen, reprinted from Let's Play Hockey by John Russo. Number one, always back up your partner on the offensive blue line, in the neutral zone, and especially in the defensive zone. Number two, always one defenseman in front of the net when the opposition has the puck in your zone or there is a danger that they may gain possession. For young defensemen, mites through early peewees, the rule should always be one defenseman in front of the net when the puck is in your zone. Number three, do not leave the offensive zone too soon. Leaving too soon is a much more common mistake than leaving too late for a large percentage of defensemen from mites through high school. It backs the defense up too fast and too far and makes pacing the attacking forward much harder. Number four, always play defense first. If attacking with the puck, only go deep into the offensive zone until prime scoring opportunity is over and you are part of it. Number five, never play a one-on-one -on -one head on. Give the attacker a little room on one side to force him to go where you want him to go. Number six, stagger one defenseman up a little farther than the other on two-on-twos and three-on-three -three situations. The up man will generally be nearest the puck carrier. Number seven, shoot intelligently from the point. The best shot is always low, generally not too hard and accurate, so it stays in the scoring area for rebounds. Defensemen seldom are shooting to score, but rather to put the puck into the scoring area so that forwards can score. Always look up so shots are not into opposing players and so that passes to wide wings or partners can be made when appropriate. Number eight, do not tie up with people in front of your net. Rather gain position and control. Number nine, do not ever tie up with an opposing player anywhere when your team is a man short. As the players on the team with a penalty tie up and are out of the play, the odds get better on the power play, i.e. 4-on-3 is better than 5-on-4, 3-on-2 is better than 4-on-3, etc. Number 10. Do not stand looking for someone to pass to, especially in the defensive zone. Look, move, look, pass. This reduces chances of being surprised from the backside makes the pass more accurate, and forces the opponent to begin retreating. Number 11. When turning with a player breaking around the outside, keep the feet moving. Do not lunge or reach without moving the feet. Young players have an especially hard time with this, mainly because their lack of skating and turning skills. Number 12. Work, work, work on backward skating and turning. A defenseman must be as comfortable going backwards and sideways as forwards. Young players all the way through college must continue to practice these skills as their bodies grow and change. Number 13. Do not pass to covered forwards. Carry it, cross pass to partner, or eat it if necessary. 
Defensemen must gain confidence in cross-passing and in carrying the puck to open up the attack, allowing their forwards to get open. Feeding the opposition's points has been a weakness at all levels since day one. Number 14. Check only for purpose. Checking just for the sake of a hit is seldom of value and creates risk of self-injury, missed checks, and open opposition players, as well as penalties. There are many situations in games when checking is appropriate and necessary. Learn to check for those situations. Number 15. Communicate with your partner, the goalkeeper, and your forwards. It is an important part of teamwork. Do not communicate with opposing players. It seldom is of value and exposes your emotions. Number 16. Follow your attacking forwards closely, 20 to 30 feet, and move quickly into the offensive zone after the puck goes into the zone. Many defensemen are lazy moving up the ice and allow the puck to turn around before they get over the blue line. And number 17, the blue line is critical. Always clear the puck over the defensive blue line as a first priority, then move up to the blue line quickly. Defend both blue lines with as much vigor as is reasonable as the opposition attacks down the ice. They are the natural points to stop the attack. And that's Rousseau's Golden Rules for Defensemen. Let's keep the puck moving up the ice and transition to Rousseau's Golden Rules of Forwards. Rousseau's Golden Rules of Forwards, reprinted from Let's Play Hockey by John Rousseau. Number one, know what your job is in all three zones and do it each time. Don't try to do teammates' jobs or you will fail at your own. Ask questions in practice if you are unsure about any situations during play or face-offs. Intelligent hockey is what wins games. Number two, back check at full speed until you have someone covered when coming back to your zone. Back checking at full speed is simply the complement of attacking at full speed. Don't be a one directional player. Number three, when back checking, Pick up the most open man without the puck. If the puck is in your area, it may be appropriate to go after the puck carrier. However, the player without the puck is often most dangerous. Often, it is most effective to let the defenseman take the puck carrier and to take away the pass by covering the open forward. Number four, put out a full and honest effort on each shift and then get off the ice. Maximum effort, short shifts have proven to be most desirable at all levels of hockey. Number five, push the puck into the offensive zone or get a whistle when you or anyone on your line is tired. A tired line is most vulnerable. It is seldom productive to play tired. It's always desirable to take a whistle in the defensive zone than to defend it without legs. Number six, always attack with the puck. Do not make it easy for the other team to catch you from behind. A pressured attack is much harder for a defenseman to cover and results in more two-on-one and three-on-two situations. Number seven, move the puck up the ice with passes to line mates ahead that are open. Then move quickly to join the rush. Don't force passes to covered line mates ahead. Skating the puck up the ice is the slowest alternative. Number eight, Get into the habit of shooting when in the slot area unless an obvious open pass is available. It is seldom productive to stick handle further once in the slot unless to gain a better angle on the goaltender or to let line mates move in for rebounding. Extra passes look good but often take away good scoring chances. The key offensive strategy of hockey is to get shots from the slot. When they are available, they should be taken. Number nine, always use a wrist or snapshot when shooting from the slot. Quickness and accuracy score from the slot. Slap shots do not provide either. Number 10, move away from the net when a teammate has the puck behind the opposition goal line or wide and deep on the boards and move toward the net when your defense or high forward has the puck in a shooting position. It is easier to remember move out when the puck is inside and move in when the puck is outside. 
The tendency is to move up close to the net when a teammate has the puck in the corner or behind the net. However, up close is where most of the congestion and close coverage is. A high slot position will result in more opportunities for clear shots. When a defenseman is in a shooting position, on the other hand, moving to the net creates the best screening of the goaltender and also puts players around the net for rebounds. There are some details to be worked out by the individual coaches, but the basic concept is important. Number 11. Take specific care not to go offside when attacking in an advantage situation, 2-on-1 or 3-on-2. While it is seldom good to be offside, it is critical to complete 2-on-1 or 3-on-2 situations as many times possible in each game. It is best to be conservative going over the blue line in these situations. Number 12. When throwing the puck into the zone, shoot it to the opposite corner or off the end boards where it will come out at a difficult angle for both the goaltender and defenseman to handle. Shooting the puck at the goaltender or around the boards gives control to the opposing goaltender who can easily feed a defenseman or wing. Number 13. Don't tie up with an opposing player when your team is shorthanded. The odds of scoring get better as fewer players are involved in a power play situation, i.e. 4-on-3 is better than 5-on-4. Number 14. Don't retaliate from checks or infractions, whether legal or not. Part of the forward's job is to take checks and keep playing. Retaliation often results in a penalty, and referees often miss the opposing player's infraction. Number 15. Communicate with your line mates and other teammates. It is one of the most important parts of teamwork. Don't ever communicate with opposing players. It seldom is of value and exposes your emotions. And number 16. Constantly practice your weakest skills. Get away from the habit of just shooting when you have free time and practice. Other skills are more important. Well, there you have it, the golden rules for defensemen and forwards. If you were to implement half of what was just suggested, I think you would be well on your way to being a more consistent and effective hockey player. Thank you, John Russo, for your hockey player golden rules, but more importantly, for the positive mark you left on the sport of hockey, and even though you aren't with us anymore, your forward thinking tenacity for change, generosity, and contributions to the growth of the sport continues to be seen brightly every fall, Mr. Elite League founder. I tip my hat to you, Mr. Russo. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, that concludes another episode of the Hockey Journey Podcast. I can't thank you enough for stopping by and listening. I hope you enjoyed the show and learning more about one of Minnesota's finest hockey advancement contributors. If you did and think there's someone in your circle of family and friends that might like this episode as well, please share it with just one person. It will really help me in growing this hockey community. Again, I appreciate you being here. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, or submit a review. I hope to see you back here soon and do me a favor. Make someone close to you smile today. All the best, my friends.